Go for the eyes, boo. Only shooting stars break the mold. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Brawl Stars. I'm Amy the Amazonian, and today I'm playing Minsk and Boo, Timeless Heroes. If you've been seeing this card in the arena queue for the last year or so, there's a good reason. It's really strong. Minsk and Boo is so powerful, in fact, that it's actually banned in Dual Commander or French EDH. It's the 1v1 competitive commander format. And why? Because it spits out a token every turn that you need it to and can grow it by plus three, plus three. And this token has trample and haste. That's right, it's Boo, the miniature giant space hamster. So Minsk and Boo in Arena actually costs one more mana. It's five instead of four and has the additional text where if you don't have a Boo, you make a Boo. But if you do have a Boo, you don't make a Boo. Whereas in paper, you can actually choose to make additional Boos for just the sake of sacrificing one of them. Not a big change but still the changes that are in Arena. Uh, Miskupu is also able to fling the hamster or any other creature you control, which means that playing big gruel creatures is the way that I've chosen to build this deck with a sub theme of scales. I'm talking about hardened scales, a card that's not actually in this deck, but uh, I have some similar cards like Ozolith, the Shattered Spire that increase the plus one, plus one counters. Uh, I'm also running Kami of Whispered Hoax for this similar sort of ability. And I think the biggest among those branching evolution that actually doubles plus one, plus one encounters. That adds up to a lot. I'm not running doubling season though. Uh, I figured branching evolution does enough because Niskin Boot does not need any more loyalty. Three is enough. I need zero more than that. So in this deck, ideally we're ramping on turn one or turn two. We're getting to some maybe early threats turn three or Maybe if we're lucky and hit turn one, turn two ramp, Minsk and Boo can come down as early as turn three. And then we start spitting out hamsters, throwing them at our opponent's face, and of course, hasting our way to our opponents. So Minsk and Boo does not need to put the plus one, plus one counters onto Boo. You can actually put the plus one, plus one counters on anything with trample or haste. So we have some good cards with trample and some good cards with haste. Um, this is just a nice way of kind of Maybe you want to leave back the 1-1 one, one to block and then make another boo next turn because you can just keep making more boo to protect Minsk. Uh, now, not every boo is the same hamster, as you might guess. Some of them are dying. But, you know, we're going to treat them all as the same. Our friendly little guy, Boo. So we're going to take Minsk and Boo into the queue and we're going to throw some hamsters. Just a couple of regular guys who throw hamsters at each other. I would keep this hand if it had something that cost one or two. It does not. This also doesn't. And we've got a lot of one and two cost ramp. We just didn't see it here. I'll try and scry to it and um, get it for turn two. Fable the Mirror Breaker, great for turn three. Not what I want right now. It's a mirror match. We don't need any Mirror Breakers. Oh, up the Beanstalk. That's fun since it does draw a card for the commander too. I use Into the North. A little bit of two mana ramp. Knew we'd draw some. Ba bam! Highland Forest. A worn power stone. That does ramp them for two. And I think that it is the right move to destroy it. So I will, rather than ramp. I'm already getting my commander out next turn if I want to. I could have also played Summit to draw a card. I could also go for Vorinclex, since Vorinclex into Minsk and Boo means double the loyalty, double the big, and it also stops their Minsk and Boo. Yeah, this, this is, I think, uh, the rudest play we could do. Rule is not that good at removing other big things. Take a Tybalt's Trickery. Are you running Tybalt's Trickery? Are you running Chaos Warp? Oh no, they have Harrow. They sacrifice a land to get two more. They're both green. That's a lot of green stuff. I'll swing in four, six, seven, eight. Oh, but the Minsk and Boo, not as good with this Vorinclex out. Comes in with one loyalty and puts one plus one plus one counter. It's the world's widow with Boo. Boo. Actually gets no loyalty because it's a plus one ability. Oh no. Now, uh, I want you to compare <laughs> their pathetic boo to my 
Chad Boo. Oh, that's a boo right there. We'll swing in and finish them off with lightning. Real lightning. GG Adamant. Niv Mizzet Perun. I do have an early Ozolith, a way to stop counter spells, but I don't have a third land, which is not great for me. I am still going to keep this hand though, because I think within the first three turns, there's a good chance I will find some. And I think that stopping counter spells is pretty important. Monkey. I could dash it or I could smash it. I just slammed down this Ragavan. Go for combat. What'd you get? Oh. <laughs> well, uh. <sighs> this actually makes this really tricky. Do I go for the Curious George? I'm going for Curious George. Let's go. They're gonna get an island. It does not need to be a basic island. Looks like they are going for a snow island. Yes, also, stealing the curiosity from their deck was very important because Niv Mizzet curiosity is just a little one two punch combo, and I hate that. So now we can stop all of their counter spells that are directed on our creatures because we've got Damri, Anarch of Bolas. They certainly don't need that to win, and stopping counter spells on creatures specifically will be quite good. Looks like that was enough. Yeah, we've taken them out. We've cut them off from two of their strategies. That's GG. Eluna, Apex of Wishes. Now I'm going to guess by my opponent's name that they are the combo version of this deck, which looks to mutate Eluna onto a token and get the one non-land permanent out of their deck with its own essence, which allows them to cast all their spells from hand for free. We get our discounts, Goblin and Narcomancer. By the way, uh, the best way to target this deck is with something that stops your opponent from casting spells for free. Yes, that's great. But most people aren't running that. Instead, killing the token as they try to mutate on it, trying to get through their counter spells, it's a good way to do it. Oh, nice. And we've got discounts, loads of discounts. Got to bring out Domri for a nice little two mana. Add some more mana. And bring out fight rigging. This is uh, going to hopefully get to cheat out something powerful like Vorinclex or Kogla in just a couple turns. My creatures are uncounterable, but everything else in my deck can be countered. See if Invasion of Zendikar gets countered. Nope, we get to ramp. I'm going to add one green, one red. I'll grab from my snow. Those are there for Into the North. Put a counter on my Goblini. And swing at the Invasion. Bam. Got myself a man land. I feel like we could just keep this here. This isn't doing anything. It's like an extra 1-1 one, one on the battlefield. Elemental Masterpiece. Getting that into the graveyard. Possibly a uh, Mizzix Mastery to recast it later in the game. I don't need a 1-1. One, one. I don't think the 1-1 one, one will win me the game. 1-1 one, one versus win-win. Hello, Aluna. I see you have 5 mana. Enough if you just wanted to cast a 6-6 six, six with Flying and Trample. Pretty strong. Just saying. In case you wanted to do that instead of, you know, trying to cheat out a permanent from your deck. No, you're not interested? Okay, well, that's 
that's your decision, and I, I cannot take that from you. Bringing out Minskin Boo. As a reminder, my creatures can't be countered. My planeswalkers can be. Oh my gosh, I got the resolve? Oh, isn't that nice? Uh, I'm going to beef up the Skyclave. This way I can hopefully just get fight rigging to trigger here. Uh, I don't need to put the counter onto the Skyclave for this to work. I'll throw it on Boo. Morinclex. I'm being told, Amy, if you had Blood Moon out right now, just imagine. Oh, I'm imagining it. This Vorinclex can't be countered because we activated Domri's Plus this turn. Yeah, nice counterspell you got there, Omni. Get out of here. A bit of gruel on both sides of the battlefield here with Atali Primal Conqueror. We've got three mana. That's enough to cast this and nothing else. We're going to ball again and try to find something better. This is nice. I've got some acceleration in this hand. I've got a little card draw, some, uh, well, speed. I like this. Uh, turn one, I'm just going to play the Spike Field Cave as a land. I said hello. I should say hello back. Hi! I don't always notice when people say hello. Behold, a goblin that discounts my red and green spells. They used Wolf Willow Haven to ramp. They're up to four mana now. Migration Path brings them to six. All they need to do is play a land, and then it's a tally time. Well, we've got so many choices. I've got all these great two drops. It's just a matter of which to use. I'm going to use Samut to draw a card. I'm not playing the Ozolith yet because there's a chance I'll draw like Llanowar Elf. Yeah, nope, no Llanowar Elf. Play the Ozolith out. And now I fully expect Atali to come down this turn. Is it dino time? The dino with the Crimo? I haven't seen a land yet. There's no land. It's Nissa who shakes my world. Nissa can untap a land, put three plus one plus one counters on it. There's their land. Nice. It was a uh, Tangled Veil. Oh, and an Allosaurus Shepherd. Don't worry. I don't. I don't have counter spells. I'm. I'm a Gruul deck. I guess I could technically have Tybalt's Trickery. I'll just tell you this now. I don't have Tybalt's Trickery in the deck. Minsk and Boo comes down for four mana. Look, it's I'm, I'm practically just running the original version. I'm going to put the counters onto Samut and swing at Nyssa. She has Vigilance. She has First Strike. She's pretty great to just load counters up to. Uh, by the way, if you've never seen this card before, it is from March of the Machine, The Aftermath. So it is an easy card to miss. All right, from their side, they got the... Oh. Well, first of all, they got the, uh, the Argusy. Second of all, that's a Nyssa Ascended Animist. This is able to blink Atali on attack. Getting more activation or, or uh, triggers from it. Ooh, more ramps from Berwald Sage. This Nyssa, though, this is a problem. Uh, I can destroy the Argusy here. I'm going to beef up some, some more. This is just to get the Great Henge to cost two mana. We're going to use Cabaretty Revels. And Reclamation Sage to hit that thing. We'll also draw some cards. Yay, card draw. Thank you, Great Henge. I appreciate you, Great Henge. I do have extra mana here. You can use that to exile something from Graveyard. And I will swing some at Nyssa. Is it a good henge? It's a pretty good henge. They have enough mana to replay Atali. Yeah, they have before and after haircut photos for Nyssa. 
don't worry, her hair did come back. I don't know if they have the three mana Nissa in here, the um three mana creature Nissa, but she does have her hair back. All right, well, this time, I don't think you'll steal anything as good as Nissa because there's not many cards in my deck that are that good. No, they got Ruby. And Serpapard. Wow, you really hate counter spells. Serpapard, Allosaurus Shepherd. Like, I'm glad you hate counter spells. I get it. This Nissa is approaching ultimate. Shifting Ceratops. Also, again, this person hates counter spells so much. I love this. I think they'll destroy my hand. Oh, <gasps> Nissa, how dare you? Now how am I supposed to draw lots of critters? Imagine ulting both Nissas at the same time. You should attack me with everything here. No? Okay. I'll eat up that shepherd. Oh, Tyvar stand, huh? I'm trying to see if I could, like, maybe win off just, like, flinging things. <laughs> we'll get him, boo. only have five, which means I can do it for six. Um, first strike, but okay. Uh, yeah, I'll kill that eight, eight first. Ah, an indestructible boo! But why would we do such a thing? The answer is so I can sacrifice boo and fling it at Nissa and draw seven cards. I have to discard three because I have too many in hand. Uh, one, two, three. I made it indestructible so I could destroy it. Yes. I know exactly what I'm doing. What I'm doing is booing. Indestructible? Aww, that's cute though. This Nissa can still ult, but this is just, it's getting a lot of mana out. They already have plenty of mana. Lands they don't really have. See what they do. Are you attacking Minsk and Boo? I mean, sure. Bye, Minsk and Boo. Now here come the rest of the lands. These also become indestructible. Tear to Boo hold. Ooh. Ooh. They have to select every single forest in their deck manually. It might take a minute. No longer will burn down the house, take those guys out, but we can try to get some value off like Cabaretti Rebels here. Or we could just replay Minsk and Boo. I kind of want to do Rebels things. This is smarter, though. Minsk and Boo! Timeless hero! A fresh Boo. A block of Boo. Uh, we enhance our Samut. They can just chump block it if we attack in, so we don't bother. I can either go for Ragavan or one of these Mana Dorks. I could go for the Armored Scrap Gorger. I could also technically hold up this. Nice. Fresh land. Choose green. Hey, Krillian! Thank you for the three-month resub! I don't want to untap. Untap. 
I have no zero drops in the deck. Pass the turn. Yeah, so Samut, I was just trying to get big enough to be able to repeatedly block Atali. And if she dies, we can move her counters onto something else using Ozala. Yeah, Luca. Luca's able to deal damage just based on Atalia's power. I think Luca is, by the way, a fine card to put into a deck with this. The same with um, same with Chandra. If you're looking for a less kind of creatures and scales build, just put in the gruel good stuff. I'm blocking. Uh, these are indestructible. Oh, wait, the boo will come back, so we'll block with that too. Boodles of boodles. All I need to do is get a little bit bigger. I might be able to win off just like eating something with, with Minsk and Boo. Remember, we got that minus two. I think if I burn down the house, make tokens, they have to block tokens, throw that. That's almost lethal. Very close. Flipped oddity could also help win. Very possible. These are the tricky ones. Yeah, giving everything trample, especially her. Do I have enough to play and flip, though? Because that's a lot of mana. That, that takes 11 mana. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. No. Luka coming in hot. I imagine they're just trying to kill a bunch of my creatures. Now, as long as I have one creature at the start of combat, though, I can make something real big. Real big. It would only take 10. Does it discount? What discount? Ooh, I didn't actually realize that could hit uh, Planeswalkers. Nice. So we got 12 plus one plus one counters. Mm-hmm. This is the beginning of combat. I think we're good. All right, so we're going to play Ragavan and... Can I also afford Minsky Boo? Oh, I can't afford Minsky and Boo. He's nine mana. We are not good. We need to be something trampoly. Two off from doing this and this. I wanted to eat the monkey so bad. This is the most damage I can get. I can get more mana. We just go for it. Kami would only make one color. So maybe if I didn't play Ragavan... If I didn't play Ragavan, we could have played Minsk and Boo, put all the counters onto the Kami. That would have worked. Well, too late now. I've thrown in the towel. It's a very sweaty towel. Whoosh. Looking good. Death by poison. Kojama of the West Tree, a modified commander who cares about equipments and more likely plus one plus one counters. Uh, Kodama is actually a card you can put into this version of this deck, the scales kind of version. Works pretty dang well with Kodama. It gives you extra ramp and rewards you for hitting people's face with Boo. Hmm, a Rot Priest. I guess that's a good thing to target. I've got Ruby, who can be immediately tapped for the Kami of Bamboo Grove, so I can get out and extra land. Hmm. 
Ooh, the horn beetle. Do I let myself get hit by toxic? Oh, never mind. They didn't even try. I mean, I've got five mana. Minskin Boo. Put some plus one, plus one counters on to Boo. And I think I'll just stay back. Uh, I think that blocking against these guys is going to be better than just trying to get in a little bit of damage. Uh, Kodama, would you like to hit me with some critters? Remember, targeting their own creatures, even with, like, a fight spell, or in this case, a bite spell, does poison me. Okay, so they use Master's Rebuke, followed by Blizzard Brawl. They do have three snow lands, so they have successfully killed Boo. Boo! I'll just prevent some damage to Minsk and Boo, so I get another Boo. Ah, but that's not the only 5-drop I've got. I see a Quartzwood Crasher ready to roll. We could have used Kayla's Kindling, but that's not as fun as making dinosaurs. We hit for 4, and because Boo has Trample, we get a 4-4 Dinosaur. And our opponent leaves the game. Because dinosaurs. Yorion Sky Nomad, the big blinky bird serpent. I've got some ramp in this hand, so I will keep this. Armored Scrap Gorger and Ruby. I've also got a little bit of protection and some stealing. Ooh, rubber of the rich or rubber of the reach. It does have reach. I don't know why it has reach though. I think it's just because it's an archer. That feel that feels too easy though. Oh, fading hope back into my hand. I can double spell next turn with Ruby and another one of these two drops. Assuming Ruby does not get countered. Okay, Signet. Going for Ruby. And I'm going for Ramp. I now have five mana on the battlefield. Ready for Minsk and Do to do the thing. Replicating ring. They're just kind of ramping. Where are your blinkables? Apparently there are no blinkables. Here come Minsk and Boo. Exiling that from their graveyard. Making a dude. And swinging at it with... For four. Nice. They have... More mana than I do, as a deck that is gruel and rampy. This is even more mad. I'm wondering if this is just like a Paradox Engine deck. Since all they've really done is ramp. Nice, they get a Plains! And a Charming Prince. So Charming Prince is a great card to use Yorian to loop permanents. Uh, as far as, like, permanents, you can also just blink to untap them. All of these, you can just blink, untap them. They'll come back untapped in your end step. I think it's time to get even more guys out here. Robber of the Rich, and Halana and Elena. We're going to put our plus one, plus one counters. Actually, hold up. I'm going to go to combat. I'm going to beef up the robber. Get my damage in. I'm killing that charming prince. We're going to yeet Boo at Prince Charming over here. Draw four cards. And cut them off from that loop of slowly being able to blink in the end step. File of Galadriel allows them to draw an extra card if their hand is empty. Got a board wipe? Because it kind of felt like a board wipe. No? 
Well, then that's going to be game because we can make an army with our creatures, swinging in for a lot of damage. GG, Yorian. KMC is playing Atali Primal Conqueror, which is apparently the most popular deck for me to match up against playing Minsk and Boo, because I've run into a lot of them today. How do you do, Atali, the Crimosaur who casts creatures or other spells from the top of each player's library? This one just finds the top spell when it enters the battlefield and bam, gets it for free. What the? What was that? Did you just cast Veil of Summer just for nothing? I mean, I guess I don't have blue or black spells, but still weird. Weird choice. Okay, uh, I'm going to play Samut first because I might get a green source off of her hitting. Minus one card in hand. Oh, look, a land. It'll come in tapped, though. Still a green source. We scry. Norinclex, 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 Norinclex. I already have Minsk and Boo next turn. They just didn't want it to hold priority, you know? That's smart. I think I'm done ramping. Minsk and Boo time. Get some counters onto Samut. Sorry, Boo. And swing in. She has vigilance. It's just good. Boo hit face, which means we do draw a card. We got Reclamation Sage. They already do have mana for Atali, but otherwise, like, this Rex Sage, we can go for the Fire Mind Vessel. Hmm, what's more important? My Smut or my Minsk? With this guy out, uh, I'm going to say that the Smut's more important. Use up some of these resources. Reclamation Sage, take out the Fire Mind Vessel. And I like Fable the Mirror Breaker here. Boom. Pow, kablammy. Down to five. They don't have enough mana for Atali anymore. Hi, Gwenna. Oh, I forgot. It's a Saga. It doesn't do anything. Yeah, I could have used one of these to get some ramp. Sagas don't get counters with Vorinclex on the battlefield. Fun fact. So let's take Vorinclex off the battlefield. Like, easy solution, right? Swing in, deal some damage, have some fun, win the game. Big green stompy featuring Galti. Galti? Galta! Primal Hunger. Uh, we've actually been revealed a new Galta from Caverns of Ixalan. I'm pretty excited to get to play with that. Um, I'm going to mulligan this hand that we do have double Ozolith. Looking for some ramp, finding some ramp. We'll play our turn one Delighted Halfling. I could play Ruby and Ozolith. Sure. Playing Ruby also gets me Minsk and Boo next turn. And that sounds good. Turn three, five drop is good. Yeah, the new Galta does look nuts. It uh, puts creatures from your hand into play when it enters the battlefield, which at a fairly low cost for also being a 12-12 means it's really, 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 really strong. Here comes Minsk and Boo! who also puts extra plus one plus one counters on things. Swing in for five. It is not an only if you cast it restriction on the new Galta. No, it's you could you could blink it, bounce it, reanimate it, do whatever you want. Kazandu Mammoth! Now it's no Two mana, 12, 12, though. That, that, this is its own special type of beautiful. Uh, I'm going to throw down Goldspan Dragon. Throw some counters on her. Care to block? Nope. Down to seven. I'm going to bolt this in and play Orin Reef Ooze. It'll be a 4-4. Four, four. And next turn, all I need to do is minus two, and I can just yeet the Goldspan Dragon at their face. 
This game may be done. Boo's doing work. Boo's doing work. Boo's doing work. Horn Reef Ooze when we attack and we'll get extra plus one plus one counters and our creatures with plus one plus one counters already on them. Hello, Kazandu Mammoth. Hello, Galta. Galta, it's a shame you don't have reach. But this Goldsman Dragon is still winning the game. Oh no, not Minsk! Go for the eyes, boo. Yeah, it also can't have reach. She has teeny tiny arms! Itty bitty little arms! Die! And we win! GG Galta! Kaya Intangible Slayer. Honestly, a pain in the butt deck to play against, but I believe in our deck. What makes this Kaya so rough? Well, she's got Hexproof, so she's really, really hard to deal with. But also, on top of that, she can steal and make copies of your creatures and enchantments. And you could just pack the deck filled with Planeswalkers and Board Wipes. And there's really no downside to it. As long as you don't have creatures, who cares if you're destroying all creatures? So they'll ramp up to her, and then they'll do some nasty work. Uh, thankfully, you don't have to worry that much about counter spells, but everything else is fair game when it comes to this deck. Let's see if we end up getting hit by a board wipe right here. They might want to cut me off from a turn three Minskin Boo. Key to the archive. I wish I could destroy it. Let's get a uh, reclamation stage off the top. They discarded a chromatic lantern. Huh. I can destroy it. Oh, don't mind if I do. Ow, but like also ow. Big fan of getting rid of a key to the archive. Death this man, thank you for gifting us up to Snuggle Bunsies. Look at his little tiny Nissa. He's like, I should have come in with seven loyalty. Oh, well, she's been exiled anyway. Uh, by the way, you can tell from this A22 that this D-Spark was generated by Key to the Archive. They'll now be drawing extra cards each turn, but also losing life each turn. Um, considering going for Minsk and Boo here, it's more damage this turn if I go for Halana and Elena. Oh, for Halana and Elena. And I'm going to, indeed, pay two. You get two plus one plus one counters on Halana and Elena. Give this haste. Swing for six. I think we're putting them in a board wiper bust situation. You have to stop the damage next turn, or there's going to be too much of it. The bigger Halana and Elena are, the more plus one plus one counters they put onto other creatures. I have a Halana and Elena paper commander deck. It's very fun. It's not that good. But it's very satisfying to, like, make Halana and Elena, like, a 15, 16. Oh, okay. Well, they killed her. They still have two mana up. That is enough for most kill spells. Next turn, if they get an untapped mana source, they'll be able to play Kaya. Trying to decide if I want to hold up Heroic Intervention. It's probably a good idea. So there are many exiling board wipes. No, I'll lose that. And there's also like Kaya herself, who has a targeting ability. 
I'm making it kind of obvious what I have, but that's okay. Rexian Arena helping uh, along their life total here. You play Kaya? We've got seven mana. That's enough to cast, I assume, pretty much every spell in their deck. Okay, Elspeth conquers that. There's only one valid target. But it is invalid because we said so. I'll cast Escape to the Wilds, since uh, I don't think Clothis would be that amazing. It would be two extra damage, which, watch that have been lethal, and I'm just like, eh, I'm not doing the math today. Also deal four extra damage by yeeting this. Ooh, hoo -hoo, what a delight. I'm going to shock this in. A little less damage. What could I get on the hideaway? Oh, Reclamation Sage. I could undo some of their ramp, hitting that Cold Seal Heart. Not that afraid of the Elspeth Conqueror's death. I play Vorinclex, because it gets me lands. It's big. Lelia is fast, and I would be able to attack with her. Okay, I'm going to go for this. We're going to put three plus one plus one counters onto Boo. The next plus one plus one counter onto the Delighted Halfling. That gets me Lelia. We swing in. We get a plus one plus one counter as the card goes into exile. Boom, boom, boom. They're at one. Phyrexian Arena. They draw a card. They lose a life. We win the game. Damage. Thank you so much for watching this episode of Brawl Stars. As always, if you'd like to find me recording these live, come over to twitch.tv slash Amazonian. I stream almost every single day. Also, this was recorded on a Monday because it's Minsk and Boo Monday. Yay! Uh, I have been recording a bunch of the various companions from Baldur's Gate 3, such as Minsk and Boo. I also did uh, Shadowheart and Lazel, and I'm planning to do Minthara and a couple of the other ones, and any of the ones that you happen to request. Many of those cards, by the way, are different in Arena. Some of the changes are very small, like Minsk and Boo, just changing the mana value and the ability slightly. Some of them are a lot more different, like all the specialized cards, and some of them are approximately the same, like Minthara whose major difference is that she wiggles in Arena. Yes, she has a wiggling animation. It's pretty great. Uh, if there's a card, though, you'd like to see me build as a commander, either from Baldur's Gate or maybe from Wilds of Eldraine, just let me know. Tell me in the comments, because there's a chance I might build it. Thank you so much for watching, and have a brutal day.